Hey all, welcome to a new video of DeFi Weekly. So today what I want to cover is minor extractable value, or aka MEV. It's one of those things you hear about literally all the time, but you're like, what is this thing about? So, uh, minor extractable value. Before we talk about what MEV is, we first actually need to understand how a blockchain fundamentally works. So, let's get into it. You have, let's say, user A over here. Let's call him Bob. He's like, yo, I want to send ETH to my homie Alice. Alright, and he just sends it out into, you guys might think, quote, blockchain universe. Well, it's a bit more nuanced than that. What really happens is he will send this to his node that he's connected to. Um, let's say, in this case, it's an instance of Infura. Don't worry, Infura is just like a type of node hosting service. But anyway, all these nodes uh, from different providers and different people all around the world, they talk to each other. And what they do is... They essentially send any incoming requests, so all of this, all of these basically get kind of stored is what's informally known as the mempool. So the mempool is a list of all transactions that haven't, uh, the users want to make that are cryptographically valid because we need to make sure that Bob actually signed with his valid private key. So assuming we've got a valid transaction that's kind of gone through this entire flow, uh, you now have a bunch of transactions in the mempool. And basically what the mempool is, it's all of your unconfirmed slash pending transactions. So in other words, they're, um, let me change color here, they're unmined transactions. And when I say unmined, because when you have a mined transaction, that means it's actually on the blockchain, as you know, right? This is like, so in its pre kind of blockchain state. So anyway, you have a bunch of transactions in this mempool right here. And you then basically have these miners. Uh, oh, that's a bit sad. I just got boxes. Okay, whatever. Uh, so you have all these miners that are kind of chilling out here. And the miners, their responsibility is to pick off a bunch of transactions from the mempool, order them, and then create a block out of them. And then guess the correct hash for the block or, quote, mine it. So mine this block that I created and now it gets added to the chain of blocks known as the blockchain. So, I'm not sure if you can figure out, but the issue lies, or what minor extractable value, minor extractable value, the problem lies in this area right here. Because what, so you as a pleb user had to go through all of this hassle just to reach this point in time. But you see the miner, let's say we have, um, what's an evil name? No, let's say, okay, let's say we have Chad over here. Chad is actually a miner. So what do you think Chad can do that Bob can't do? Well, he can include his own transactions inside any block. And not only that, he can actually put them right at the top of the priority list. So he can say, no, 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 my transaction comes first, everyone else comes later. And I'm not sure if you can see where this is going, but uh, <laughs> it's problematic because let's say Bob is like, oh, I found this, uh, so arbitrage for those of you that don't know is uh, basically executing a trade that makes you money um, without any risk. So let's say he's like, I want to make this ob trade that makes me five ETH. And there's a lot of trades that are very profitable on chain. They kind of go through this 
uh, entire flow, right? But the thing is, Chad can basically see, huh, that's a good transaction, bro. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create this exact same transaction and include it in my block. And I'm going to put it first. So I'm going to extract the value before you can. And that is literally what minor extractable value is. It's miners who are basically looking into the mempool and rather than including profitable transactions into their blocks, they craft their own profitable transactions and chuck them in first. Uh, and as you can see, that's kind of like why people are kind of um, talk about it so much because it's like you can predict or see what someone's going to do and just front run them entirely. So then you say, well, okay, how do you solve this? And that's the thing. There's no great way of solving this right now. Um, one thing that's like, so for example, if you're Bob and you want to execute this kind of trade, one thing that you can do, however, uh, is actually they're like now kind of these private mining pools um, that are kind of, it's like personal security or like personal bodyguards where rather than going to this like mempool, you send your trends uh, through some random node provider, you go straight to this miner and you pay him directly. So it's like you broker a backdoor deal with the miner or you just pay him say, look, like I want my private, uh, oh, private mempool that doesn't go through and go through the public. So my, uh, like pre my, my blockchain activity before it hits the chain should be private. And then these private miners operate in a different world compared to these public miners. So as you can see, this kind of creates a whole new host of kind of things in like how we kind of operate, uh, like these blockchain networks. So uh, there's definitely like in other chains, there's, I'm not too sure like how MEV works on like layer twos and other things. I think there is some of it in some networks, but um, I haven't done enough research to give you a good enough answer on that. But anyway, here's a, like basically the rundown of what minor extractable value is, how it works and why you should care about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to drop any suggestions for the next one you want to see in the comments. Thank you. Bye.